How's it going? <laughs> Check it out. Ta da! <laughs> Man, it's pretty nice and straight. I got to anneal it first. I got the oven cooking up to 1525, and it says then bring it down to 1300 pretty quick, and then from 1300 to 1200, 10 degrees. But I went, I went to Home Depot and got a big old thing of vermiculite and some buckets. <laughs> One of the buckets is from my spark bucket because that, that thing is more than halfway filled with metal and G10 and carbon fiber and whatever. So I need to switch out buckets. It'd be awesome to get a big magnet and separate it and smelt it on down because I've actually got two filled buckets filled with just scrap metal from my spark bucket. Let me get this bad boy in. Then I'm gonna work on my other knives while I uh, wait for this oven. I call, I wrote to um, the people that do the PID to see if I can get better instructions on this ramp and soak thing. Cause to bring it from 1300 to 1200 at 20 degrees over like four or five hours is gonna be crazy. So, you know, I'm gonna stick it in the vermiculite after two hours coming down from 1300 and see how it does. So hopefully that'll work it out. You know, some people say just take it to 1500 and air cool it, but I tried that. Uh, there's a guy that was like famous for 52100 and 5160, like Kevin Carshaw or something like that. If you type in a kneeling 5160, his name comes up. So I'm going to give his plan a shot. One says bring it from 13 to 1200 in six hours. So, <laughs> but I ain't got six hours, so I'm just I'll bring it down for two and be working on my other knives. So let me go and get this in the oven. I bought some new muriatic acid. That's why I'm not putting any scale or anything on this because it's already got plenty of scale. I'm just going to dip it in muriatic acid for 20 minutes after we anneal it. Here we go. It's going to be like five or six hours, so, <laughs> but we'll see afterwards. Also, I'm putting metal at the bottom of the bucket before I put the vermiculite in. Just in case the knife falls to the bottom at 1200 degrees. I don't want it burning a hole through the bucket. <laughs> the sides should be good enough. Here we go. This is the vermiculite. We're at 1200. I should be able to just grab it. Yeah. I'm gonna let the bucket cool down and uh, that should be it. We got it all taken care of. Now it's just got to cool overnight or however long it takes. It's been quite an experience. Uh, four hours of annealing. <laughs> Hopefully this works better than just turning the oven off because I mean it kind of worked. It, I could drill through the last one but man can't wait to get working on this one. What I did is I took it to 1525. It took about an hour. The guy at Auburn's, the PID, I put the name right here, he taught me how to set it to do the fastest ramp possible. So it actually cut the ramp time down by about 40 minutes. So once it hit 1525, I set it down to 1300 and I opened the door so it quickly dropped from 1525 right down to 1300. I mean, real quick. And I kept closing the door and it'd ramp up a little bit and I'd open it and close it until I got it down to 1300. Because when you open the door, it'll drop, but you close the door and it climbs back up. If you've ever seen any of my other heat treating videos, I've set it in that. Then once I got to 1300, I had it set to where it goes from 1300 to 1200 in three hours. So after about two hours and like 45 minutes, I just set it to 1200, gave it about five more minutes, and then pulled in the vermiculite, and that's what you just saw. So let's hope this works. Back to the bench. 24 hours later. So we're back, here we go. <laughs> just took it out of the vermiculite, so. What I'm going to do first is drill a hole here, just a small one so I can hang it. And then I'm going to go dip it in um, muriatic acid for 20 minutes. The hole back here won't hurt anything because when I'm actually starting to do the handle, I'm going to be drilling a bunch of divots in here and the wood so the epoxy holds. I'm actually getting some G-Flex, which should be here in a couple days, so hopefully we can get onto that too. Let me go drill this out. 
Then I'm going to dip it in muriatic, and then I'll be back. To be honest, I don't think that muriatic did much. I just hit this on the belt. Man, that's got some thick scale. <laughs> I guess I'm just used to working with uh, stuff that comes from the factory and all that. Not where it's been hammered in and all that. Quite a difference. <laughs> but I did get it all off the top here. I get the top thin down. So what I want to do now, basically, take my scribe. This is straight. So now we just have to figure out. Yeah, the bed's about six millimeters, so he kept it pretty good that way. So I'm just gonna have to keep everything even. So he did a good job. It's just these where it curves in right here. I'm gonna have to fix up. But man, he did a damn good job of doing all that. And I'm nowhere to bring that line straight down. And that'll be my mill line so we can cut that edge in. Cut that, cut that. Then we can see, you know, back here looks about where we want to be. So we'll just have to bring this down just a little bit. All right, so, so I can fit this in my vise. <clears throat> I dike them up. I took the calipers, it fit right here. And we'll just kind of have to eyeball it to get it straight, but. Now I'm gonna go put it on my platen and let's go grind it down. I'm just gonna bring this in. Just have to get my eyeball. You know, it doesn't have to be straight. It just has to be square here. So it fits. Just so I can get it in the vise and go from there. All right. Check it. Alright, we got a little bit more to bring down. See, I got it kind of straight, <clears throat> but I just want to mill in these edges to make everything perfect. So when, it, when I hit the handle on, it's going to line up, you know, great. Man, that muriatic acid barely touched that. <laughs> but see, I figure as long as we keep everything centered with this, we should be good. And you know what? The annealing process I did for this one is a lot different than that other one. Just putting it in the... Uh, the oven and then you know letting it sit at 50 you know 1500 or 1550 and then just letting it cool man i can tell a big difference between this and the other one they're both 5160 but man this one grinds a lot easier to the mill it's a different day <laughs> i took the vice out because i just couldn't get a good setup that high I want to make some vice stands like you've probably seen this old Tony and a few other makers do. Right. I'm using a big old uh, roughing mill and then I'll put the quarter inch fine mill on here. I'm just going to take it slow. Let's see what we got. I'm not really using the DRO, but I am going to set it up just to check for my numbers but there's no use to keep it going or keep a camera waste a camera on it I may have to take this one out keep hitting this other camera <laughs> let me see what I can sit up man yeah, that's a better shot now and I got that camera out of my way I'm just gonna take it a little bit at a time 
Hold on. I gotta go look up quad milling and conventional milling. Because <clears throat> it's spinning this way. And I think you want it to I think you want to feed it into it. Quad milling, I think, is going against it. So if it's coming this way. Now uh, let me go check. <laughs> yeah. So since it's going clockwise, I want to feed it in front to back. Glob this up here. Now, fire this thing up. Oh, let me lock down my Z. And we'll zero it. Just to know where we're at. Anything. Oh, that's why I can't see anything. <laughs> Bring it back. And we'll... Let's see. Yeah. And we're going to go over. Take 30,000 off. Yeah. Okay. There we go. Got a nice shelf there. Now, I'm gonna bring it over this way and touch off Z, unlock it. Just come down until we touch, lock it. Bring it back out. Come over to zero. Lock the sides down. Put a little bit more dippity do on here. Let's do this. And come down just a hair more. Oh, got it like that. Touch it off here. I was thinking since this is flat and this is flat, this should be flat. Let me take off half of that. We're at 0.13, so we'll go point. Let me take off 0.5 and see what that looks like. Going up to A. All right. All right, let me touch you off here. Zero, lock in Z. We'll just take this slow.
This should be the last cut that I'll start, you know, doing the rest of it. Alright. get the rest you know when I get both sides I put the vise back on and we'll go across here and here so you get all four sides nice and flush all right I kind of got this set up it goes from 75 up to 80 and then back down to 75 square was here too so and all I'm doing is coming across cutting here, so we should be all right. I think next time I'll start from the top and bottom, and then that will give me a shelf. Yeah. Well, there's one thing I've learned. <laughs> if I started at the top, that would have given me the top and the bottom shelf, and then I would have just milled in the middle. All right. Always learning sometimes. Let's do this. <laughs> I'm going to go zero it, and then I'm going to go down six, because that was pretty good. Oh. Nope, I didn't like that. All right, so we know this is square. I was worried about this board not being square, but it is. All right, there we go. I guess if I would have checked that in the first place, I would have been all right. <laughs> Okay, instead of breaking out my dial, but I haven't used that Mitsutoyo dial indicator. I've had it for a few months and never really used it, so. Boys and their toys, huh? I should have done this in the first place. Get some wooden blocks. Now, now the wood should put more pressure. Hopefully. All right, now we're going to touch off again. There's our zero. All right, I'm going to get out and try. All right, I'm just going to drop it uh, just a little bit at a time, like, uh, Maybe two, you know, twenty thousands. Yeah, you see that little shelf right there? So that's how much more we had to come off. Ah, now I see why it was so hard going back and forth. This was sitting. <laughs> this was caught on my vice. That's why it was so. Yeah. <laughs> Man. When you get tired, you start doing stupid things. I'll just have to do it uh, manually. So yeah, look. Right here and right here. I should have done the top and then the bottom first. Because now I just got to pull this back over. I'll meet you back at the bench, but we're pretty much done. Well, with this much, I still got... <laughs> but we are square once I bring these two in. Wow, now that was fun. So what I'm gonna have to do now is file this off. You can see where it's got this that little lip. I'll just have to do the rest of that with a file. But man, for my first time, I'm pretty happy with those results. Nice and straight. Everything's looking good. Came out real nice. I got some of this G-Flex. I see a lot of knife makers using it. 
I'm gonna use the little syringes for medicine that my mom has, you know, cause she's got a feeding tube in her stomach. So I feed her every day, like three times a day. But I digress, I'm gonna use some of the little ones, the older ones, to measure this perfect. Then, here's what I plan on doing with the handle. I'm gonna cut a piece, not this piece, but this is just a piece of ebony in the middle, and then I'll hollow out where the tang is, and then I'll sandwich some of this koa around it and make the handle from that. For the chopper, I got some of these uh, coca bola, so that should be real nice. What I'm gonna do is put, the, in the next video for the collab, I'll probably do something with the 5160 next too, but on this, I'm gonna put it on the surface grinder, I'm going to put some plates under it, that way it'll connect to the uh, magnetic cable and then I can keep it straight and I can just do these. Get the integrals so they're straight. And then I'm trying to contemplate if I want to use the one inch wheel to bring this in or if I want to do it on the mill. Because I have like a one inch end mill that would curve this in. I just have to draw out the lines and everything and curve it perfectly. The end mill you know, it would be my first time trying it, so it's a little bit more dangerous, but it would be perfect. Where on a one inch wheel, it'd be, you know, you know, human error. So I'm still contemplating which one I should do with that. So we got a long way to go with this build. I got some shirts come, well, I got one shirt made. So I want to see what it looks like. I found the site that they'll print them out for me and ship them and all that. You can just go to their site and order them. So I was editing and look what came today. So I can throw this in. Let me know in the comments what you think and be as brutally honest as you want. I messed up right here and left the white here and right here. So I'm gonna have to fix that. But other than that, you know, I'm pretty happy with it. You know, let me know because I'm really interested to, you know, see what people think before I put this out. Back to the end slate. Sticker should be coming too. <laughs> Gotta to invest in your company, right? <laughs> but I digress. Thanks for watching. Please like, please comment, please subscribe, share with your friends, hit the notifications. Whatever YouTube is deciding for the notifications, I don't know. Please just uh, show me some support. I really appreciate it all. And as always, take it easy.